few weeks ago, I noticed that my children, especially my younger children, um, that they that they were starting to feel a lot of fear um, related related to the pedophile crisis um, in our neighborhood. Um, and the truth is, they're actually quite justified to feel fear. Um, it's a pretty scary situation. Um, the alleged pedophiles um, are still um, roaming free around Nachlaot, um, and um, it's it's a scary situation. So. Um, so I spoke with a psychologist about, about what I could do to help my children. Um, and what she said is, I mean, of course, to watch my children as carefully as possible, to really not let them go anywhere by themselves um, below a certain age. Um, but she said, um, but she suggested something. She said, tell your children, tell your children this. Say, Ima and Abba, say you should know, Ima and Abba's top priority, number one priority, is keeping you safe. So, um, so the next day, like after I spoke with her, I called like a family meeting, and I said to all the children, I said, I said, you know, um, just wanted you to know, Iman Abba's top priority is your safety. Um, and I felt like a bit mixed about saying this because it's just on the one hand, like what can I really do? Like what can I really do? To, I mean, I, I can watch over them very, very carefully, but I, you know, it's like to to um, to, get, to get to get rid of these pedophiles, which is what we really really need to do. Like, what can I really do? You know, I don't like what power do I have to really like get rid of these people? Um, I don't really have that power. I wish I did. So I felt like a bit funny, like saying this to my kids, like, are th this as though like I feel like, well, what comfort is this to them? You know, we we are involved in what the psychologists call an ongoing trauma because the pedophiles, the people who committed these crimes, are still walking freely. Um, so. Um, but the amazing, amazing thing was after I had this meeting with my kids and I said this to them, Ima and Abba's number one priority is your safety, which is true. Um, then, uh, then the amazing thing was just to see the difference in my children. To see the difference in my children the next day. Like, they were just different kids. They had been, like, very fearful and very worried, and, you know, seeing, you know, they'd be coming home and, like, seeing this scary person and this scary person. They'd become, like, so upset by, like, different people that they would see. They were just so scared. And I just thought that, like, just me saying this one sentence um, just totally changed their reality for them. Just totally gave them confidence. It made them much more confident and calm and happy. Um, and it really, it reminded me, it reminded me of the incredible power of a parent, of a parent, you know, to a, of a parent, parent to help a child and to, and to give children a feeling of confidence and calm and that, and that they're not alone in the world, you know? Um, so, um, so I experienced this again, like from 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 the opposite direction. Um, I'm, I'm experiencing this 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 like at present, um, uh, as as me as a child and my parents and my own parents helping me out. Um, so every December, um, my husband um, has to travel for two weeks to the United States. I'm sorry, to North America, also Canada, um, to interview students. My husband runs a, runs a uh, post high school program for um, for girls. Um, and uh, so my husband has to go in December for two weeks to interview the applicants for next year. Um, and so basically when my husband, um, when all these things that came out in the neighborhood four months ago, um, so basically pretty soon after that my husband was already concerned about leaving me on my own with the kids with all like, the mess going on in the neighborhood. Um, so, um, so, so my husband and I decided that they decided that I would ask my parents to come. So, um, so, and initially I was quite embarrassed. I was thinking, you know, I'm turning, I'm actually turning 40 this month, mazel tov to me. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm turning 40 this month and my parents are still going to come to my rescue. Like, I've been living, you know, I've been living in Israel for, you know, almost 20 years. I haven't lived with my parents for, you know, for 23 years. And, st like, there's still, like, I'm still like a baby who needs my parents to, like, come to my rescue. But it turns out that I actually really, really did. And um, so basically my, my husband left a week ago. And my parents are staying with me until my husband comes home. So that I'm not on my own with like all of the crazy things going on. Um, and it's been an incredible, it's been incredibly, incredibly calming um, to have my parents here. Um, it's made me feel like I think, um, it's made me feel safe. It's made me feel like sort of like, um, like things are sort of under control for the first time in four months. Um, having my parents here, it's just an incredible feeling. It happens to be also that my mother is a psychiatrist. So I've been spending quite a few hours with my mom talking about the situation and talking through the you know, different characters involved. Um, and my mom's been giving, giving me some insight into you know, what, like, why do people become pedophiles, um, the, psycho the psychiatric background of, like, um, of, uh, of pedophiles and, and what happens and of abuse. Um, and it's just been, basically, it's just been like the most 
therapeutic experience, but not only because my mom's a psychiatrist, but, that, but just because she's my mom and my dad's my dad, and they're here with me, like, I'm not alone. Um, and it just makes me understand, like, again, like, they can't, they're not taking away the problem. Like, my parents aren't going to go, my parents don't really have any way to get rid of these, you know, terrible people in our midst. Um, just like, I don't really have that, I, don't, I can't really give that gift to my children either, even though, like, I, I try in my own small ways. Um, but just by being there with me, just by being there with me, and listening to me, and listening to me, and, you know, saying what they think, and just, like, being there with me, um, it's an incredibly um, comforting experience. Um, and uh, so, so I wanted to read something on this topic um, that I read in this great book, um, Happiness in the Human Spirit, which is a, which is a newly released book by um, Rabbi Dr. Avram, um, Avram Tversky. Um, I really enjoyed his books. Um, and he tells the following story. So, um, so he says, he explains, the ability to share others' joy and grief is uniquely human, a significant component of the human spirit. We generally do not have much difficulty in sharing the joy of others, but we, but we may guard ourselves from feeling their pain. In my early days as a rabbi, I had the distressing experience of officiating at the funeral of a three-year-old child who had drowned. The following day, I made a condolence call and found a number of family members and close friends sitting together. One by one, each person left the room, and I was left alone with the mother who cried out her bitter heart. I listened to her but could not find anything to say that might be comforting. The next day, the scene was repeated. Everyone left the room, and the mother cried to me. This went on for several days. Then I received a phone call from the mother's parents, thanking me for what I had done for, Bev for what I was doing for Beverly. I was perplexed. I wasn't doing anything for Beverly. I had not been able to, to think of anything to say to relieve her grief. But eventually, I understood what was happening. Beverly's family and close friends were so personally affected by this terrible tragedy that they could not listen to Beverly's expression of pain. They were suffering too much to be present for her, for her grief. Instead, they would make conversation about any other subject to avoid touching on the tragedy. When I came in, everyone would leave the room, and only then would Beverly have the opportunity to cry and release her grief. True, I had nothing to say, but I was able to listen, and that provided a modicum of, modicum of comfort. Sometimes I'm asked whether, whether my having been a rabbi has had any effect on my practice as a physician. I think it has. Now this is interesting, listen to this. As a physician, I try to fix people's pain, to relieve them of their suffering. But as a rabbi, I learn to share people's pain. As advanced as, as modern medicine is, there are still times when I cannot fix things, but I can always share. Sometimes we are privileged to be of actual help to people who are grieving, but even when there's nothing we can do to help people, we can feel for them and with them. That too is a form of help. It has been said that joy shared is doubled and sorrow, sh and sorrow shared is halved. Empathizing with people and sharing their feelings is a uni unique spiritual human trait. Whether the feelings shared are joy or grief, the fulfillment of the sharing itself is a source of true happiness. Okay, so I felt like I felt like I could really um, I could really relate to this story because I think that like a lot of a lot of what parents are doing, you know, as parents, like we don't want our kids to have any pain. We don't want our kids to be in any difficult situations. But the reality of life is that our kids are going to experience difficulties in their lives. Our kids are going to experience, you know, challenges in their lives. And, you know, as parents, like, we so want to just, like, cure our kids' problems. We would love to just, you know, just make it to our lives so our kids don't have, so our kids' lives are just perfect and paradise and nothing ever goes wrong. Um, but it's not realistic. So what can we do? We can't solve all of our kids' problems. And we, sh we even shouldn't strive to solve all of our kids' problems. But what can we do? We, we can share their problems with them. Um, so I want to bless all of our, I want to bless all of you Jewish moms, um, that, that, with, that with your kids, that with our kids, um, that, when, that, when, that when there are issues and there's things and there's, there, there, there are problems, there are problems that, there are problems that we as parents cannot solve, okay? That, 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 and that, that, that at least that we should understand the power, the power that we have as parents um, to help our kids by being there for, for them and just, even if we can't solve their problems, by sharing their problems with them. I want to bless you with an amazing, amazing week.